All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Fit Body Secrets, where my mission is to bring you guys inspiration, motivation, and a ton of tips to help you guys on your fitness journey. And today's episode, oh man, I wanted to call today's episode like the kitchen sink episode. And I actually think I might I might even start a, a podcast uh, episode series where I call it the kitchen sink because I had so many things that I want to talk about today. And I feel like I could maybe make a, like a combined episode, but I'm going to keep this one's focused because I know we get some big things coming up this week and also want to kind of share a couple of things on my own schedule uh, to hopefully help you guys inspire yourselves to maybe set some goals for yourself. It's still the beginning of the year. I know the New Year's buzz is kind of worn off, which normally it has usually by the first or second week of January, um, but it's never too late to kind of say, all right, I really want to focus on X, Y, Z this year. And, and my year started a little bit differently than I thought it was going to. Um, I honestly didn't think I was going to have to have surgery, uh, but now I'm already almost three weeks into recovery and my year looks very different than I thought it was going to. And I'm, I'm actually excited for that. So before I go into today's episode, I do want to start by talking to you guys a little bit about an update on me and where I'm at with my surgical recovery. Uh, and I really do appreciate everyone that's been reaching out to me and asking questions and, and it's been super awesome for me to also be able to provide some feedback that I was looking for, which is why I've been talking a lot about my recovery and my surgery is that before I had the surgery, I was kind of looking for resources of like what to expect and what the downtime was going to be and, and what the recovery was going to be looking like. And, and I actually just wanted to see how other people, what they did when they went through it. And that's why I've been sharing so much of it on my stories, because I wanted other people to be able to know that if they do have to go through something like this, what they can expect and, and kind of how I've been navigating things leading up to surgery, through surgery and through my recovery. And the main thing is guys, staying consistent as you can with your lifestyle and really trying to emphasize all the one percents. And that's really what I've been doing. So my goals this year, um, it's, it's still very hard for me to talk about things that I'm confident in, but also insecure in at the same time. Um, I really wanted this year to be, well, flash forward, let me take a step back. My shoulder's been bum for a couple of years now. And last year it wasn't quite healthy enough. I still, you know, it's, 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 to 2021, uh, the shoulder, sur the shoulder issue kept me out of the semifinals. Um, I couldn't do the snatch workout in the quarterfinals. I just couldn't snatch at that time. It got better and then it got worse again. And it was this ongoing thing in 2022. It was better, but not 100%. And I decided at that day that I wasn't going to pursue going into the master's division that I wanted to really get my body healthy and get stronger. And so I decided to take 2022 season off to just focus on that, to get better. My goal was originally to compete one more year in the open division, not going back into the masters um, and then just like hang on my competitive career. Um, but that wasn't really how my life in 2022 pers continued to pursue what's the word I'm looking for. That's not how it ended up shaping out. So I met a mindset coach and he helped me a lot. And I realized that I really wasn't ready to give up competing. I think I was telling myself I had to give up competing and that I actually really wanted to see what it felt like to win again. So um, I had decided that rather than trying to be like just getting into the open division one more time, which I know I'm fit enough for, it's like, why not actually try and win the open or the master's division? So I kind of set my sights on 2023 being a year where I was going to go in competitively to try and win the 2023 uh, master's division for 35 to 39. But like I said, this year didn't pan out that way. So I ended up having to take a step back and look at, you know, where I'm at in my life and realizing that my shoulder was not going to be able to sustain the volume I needed to put it, put it through. I, I couldn't train the movements I needed to train. I couldn't get stronger. And so I had to go through with it and I'm three weeks in and it's still very scary to me. I don't know how this year is going to pan out. I don't know if it's going to be 100% again, but I know that I'm no worse off than I was because in a couple of weeks from now, if I really wanted to, I could probably get back to doing all of the strict movements. Um, worse is uh, I'm not going to be able to snatch, but I couldn't snatch before anyways. So um, where am I at? So my goals for 2023 originally being to compete um, have kind of shifted. And this is super like vulnerable for me to talk about. That's why I'm going to start by talking about this first is um, I have spent the last 13 years of my life really dedicated to being an athlete. Um, and I did that with a half in half out approach that I never was fully 
invested in competing, but it was still on my mind and that everything else I did had to kind of fit in with that being the primary goal. And over the last, I want to say four years or so, as I've grown to be a bigger nutrition coach um, and I'm helping more people, my passion for building my life around competing had shifted into, no, this is just part of who I am, which, which is awesome. Um, but I also saw that it was at a detriment of my own. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was trying to still keep up the same level of training and volume with not taking enough time for the recovery. And so it, it kind of bit me in the ass. So this year, I think I'm going into it in a bit of a relief that even though this shoulder surgery kind of sucks, it also is a blessing in disguise because I was never going to give myself that downtime. I have never taken an off season. And I'm saying all this to you guys first because we're going to go into the CrossFit open season today. Um, and my open season has always looked very different than what most people's open season looks like. So, um, so now this year, my goals are, I am shifting away from focusing on competing right now in CrossFit, but I, I am someone that is driven by goals. So, um, I want to branch out fitness wise to try and excel at a couple of other things. So one goal I have for myself is I would like to compete in Ironman triathlon, uh, swimming in open water has never been something that I'm super comfortable, comfortable with. And I can do it and I get through, but I've never honestly tried to actually train to get better at it. I train to survive it and be okay. And that's it. It's just made me super uncomfortable. So originally people were like, why don't you just do like a marathon? I'm like, well, because I can do a marathon. I'm comfortable running. I can comfortably run for a long distance, but I can't, I don't know if I can do an Ironman. So I'm going to go for an Ironman triathlon. I've looked at a couple that are coming up in uh, October, November. One's in Chattanooga, one's in Panama City. Um, so I was going to try and make one of those happen and I'm waiting to go for my next follow-up appointment to actually officially sign up for one. Um, and then the second goal that I have for myself is a 300 pound back squat, because one of the things that has held me back in CrossFit is I am one of the smaller athletes in the sport. So I want to focus this year on getting stronger as well. Uh, and I can't really do upper body stuff right now. So I'm going to really put my effort into pursuing a back squat. So those are my two goals right now. And that's fitness goals. My other goals are, you know, doing some work in relationships for myself. Um, as I said, like, you know, my whole world for like the last 13 years has revolved around my competitive season. So my family has all been very supportive of that and put up with me having to work around my workout schedules and, and vacations around my workout schedules and things like that. So I want to spend some time, you know, with family, uh, building some relationships. And, and lastly is also building my business. Um, it's something that still to this day, I don't want to cry, but like, it makes me feel humbled, excited, extremely nervous out of my comfort zone to know that I am a business owner and not just a coach working at a gym or working for somebody else. But with that comes a, a lot of pressure on myself of all the things that I want to create. And why am I doing this on my own? It's not because I ever, honestly, it's easier to work for somebody else, but it's because I have a vision for clients that I want them to experience when they work with me, when they work with us as a team. And, and I want people to feel better about themselves. And so I, I really want to focus on building my business. And that's like outside of just the fitness stuff is that that's some big goals that I have for myself this year and just putting out different ways to reach people. You know, I try and give away as much information as I can for free because I want people to learn from me. And so that's a little bit about my goals. I'm going to shoot over to the comments before I get too far in here, but I just want to say three 15 pound backs while you can do it three bucks each side, Larry, you can help me with that. Um, and yes, Kenneth, Iron Man, I'm going to go for the two things. Uh, Larry, I hope this, hope this episode will help you if you're going to do the open. Um, but yeah, I liked the idea of pursuing a back squat and a, uh, endurance thing because they're two conflicting things. And I think it just really speaks to the athlete that CrossFitters become, um, and I want to stay true to that, that we are capable of more than just one you know, do domain, one time domain, one type of modality, that we are multifunctional athletes. And I would love to put a gymnastics skill in there. Um, but because I can't get back to gymnastics until probably August, um, I'm going to say that I'll probably be able to do some strict stuff. So maybe I'll set some strict gymnastics goals as things get going, which I am talking to a gymnastics coach today, which I'm excited about. Um, but that was a little bit about my goals. And um, I love that. I love that. Have, 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 oh, I love that as well. Kind of that's great. I would also love to do that. But once again, because I can't pull off the ground um, and I can't 
do pressing overhead. I'm kind of stuck to the back squat, but it's actually kind of fun because I'm also doing some other things that I've been neglecting, like plyometrics. I can't tell you the last time I just trained jumping and I've been doing like hurdle hops and other things, which I probably shouldn't be doing with my shoulder just yet. But luckily guys, and I'm also going to be honest, I have no pain. And I've said that before. Like, I feel like, I feel like I didn't even have surgery aside from the fact that I'm limited on range of motion right now. So all of that chitter chatter for 10 minutes, because I wanted to get into today's episode, which is going to be talking about the CrossFit open. And I am going to leave the comments open because I'm sure that there's going to be some questions that pop up. And if you guys do have questions, I want you guys to feel comfortable asking me. I want this to be more of like a Q and a anyways. Um, and I'm going to start by saying, what is the CrossFit open? Uh, gosh, the CrossFit open has changed so much. Um, so I am signing up for the open. So Larry, you just sign up for the open. Uh, and I am going to have to scale the workouts. If I didn't sign up for the open, it would be the only open that I missed because I have done every other open since they started. In fact, I competed in CrossFit before the open started the year before the CrossFit open. Um, let's go into what the CrossFit open is. So essentially the CrossFit open was designed as the first stages for qualifying for the CrossFit games. And they started this back in 2011. Before that, how you qualified for the CrossFit games was you paid 50 bucks for a sectional. Um, and they had different, different States had their own sectional. Um, so I competed in the Florida sectionals, paid 50 bucks. You had to be one of the top, whatever it was that you had to be there first, kind of like getting tickets for a show. Um, you sign up, you go to this event, you place top five, you go on to the regionals. This was the first year that I met Rich Froning in the dirty South regionals. Um, and regionals, if you were top three, I believe, then you went on to the CrossFit games back then nothing was standardized by CrossFit HQ. All the sectionals, all the regionals all had their own head of team. Those people all worked with CrossFit, but they all had their own spin on how they positioned the workouts and the schedule and all that stuff. It was all individually run. So CrossFit decided to take control of all that. They took over by creating the sectionals or uh, creating the open and then into regionals and then into the games, which became a lot more streamlined. And honestly, I think it was a great, it was a great process for years and then in 2018, things got shaken up. All of a sudden, there was crazy chaos going on in CrossFit headquarters. Um, they decided to take away the regionals. And it was, you had two ways of qualifying for the games. You could qualify at a sanctional, uh, which was like Waterpalooza, Dubai. Uh, there was an Australian one. Um, there was an African one. There was uh, the West Coast Classic. There's all these different sanctionals. Or you could qualify through the Open, which was how I qualified that year in 2019. Uh, for the CrossFit Games that year. So we qualify in the open or in the sanctionals to go on to the CrossFit Games. Then they changed it all over again. And they said, okay, now we're not going to have the sanctionals as qualifying. Now we're going to go open and then we're going to go quarterfinals, semifinals games, which seems to be, I think, probably the best process aside from the fact that I do think that the biggest problem with a lot of the state, the, uh, the phases leading up to the games is that the open and the quarterfinals are both virtual. And I think that they did a really good job in the quarterfinals of the, I think the scoring and the judging was a little bit more tight, tight knit, but the open, yes, it's only the top 10%, but well, I should take that back. We're going to talk about quarterfinals in a second, uh, but there's really no standardizing. They're just trusting that you got in there. Quarterfinals, I should say, could have been a little bit better managed. Uh, last year, there was some controversy around the wall ball workout there were some other things and there's just too many people for them to go through all of those videos. So it's still a little bit, uh, a work in progress. I'm excited to see what this year's to bring. Um, that's a little bit of a history on the open. Now, what I want to talk about with the open for all of you guys out there that are doing the open is that the open is kind of, as I said, it's morphed over the last, you know, 10, 12 years or so, in which case that originally, you know, yes, I don't think everybody did the open knowing that they were going to go to the games, but it was still this like pursuit of like being your fittest with getting to the fittest. Right. Um, and as the CrossFit games have kind of sanctioned off into, let me kind of, okay, let me take a step back. So 10 to 12 years ago, the people that were going to the CrossFit games were like the top fit people in your gym. They were the people that were winning the CrossFit classes. They were the coaches at your gym. They were leading by example. What we see now as the, the sport has evolved is that the CrossFit games are no longer just the fittest people in your classes. In fact, most CrossFit games athletes 
don't even participate in affiliate programming. They're doing a complete separate program. Um, so the, the whole CrossFit versus the open season has kind of shifted and changed. And why I'm telling you guys this is because I think that the pressure is still like, oh my God, I'm trying to compete to be the fittest of these people. And it's not. The CrossFit Open is actually very different now. So what used to be just like this, we're the fittest in the gym, we're going to crush ourselves for this, you know, opportunity to get to the games is now there's almost like two ways to look at the Open. Okay. Actually three ways. You've got the people that are doing the Open and they're just doing it to get their name on the leaderboard to be the top 10% to get to quarterfinals and then to get to semifinals and then hopefully to the games. They are looking to kind of use the open as just like, got to just get it done to get me to the next stages. And that's where a, a good percentage of people might fall. There's going to be a good percentage of people that can make it to the quarterfinals, but from the quarterfinals to the semifinals, it's going to be a lot less. And then from the semifinals to the games, much less. Right. But for those people, the open is just kind of like, I'm just going to do it. I know I'll get through. Okay. Then you've got the people that are like, um, they're going to do the open because it's part of the affiliate program, but they don't really have any goals to pursue in the sport of CrossFit. Like they're not really looking to go any further. Um, by the way, I didn't mention that going on from the open also goes into the age group online qualifiers as well, but maybe there are people out there that aren't looking to go any further. So there's got your people that are looking to go as far as you can in the sport. And those that are like, you know, I'm just doing it because it's part of what my, my affiliates doing. Um, or, you know, I want to do it just to see where I'm at. That's a different case scenario. But either way, you guys are all doing the open together. And the approach to the workouts should still be pretty much the same with the focus and the pressure being slightly different. So those people that are going into quarterfinals, semifinals games, they're probably doing the workout, but they don't stress so much about their performance in the workouts because they kind of know like where they're at. They've probably got enough experience under their belt to know what they're capable of and move forward. For a lot of people, that might be kind of like, eh, I'm kind of scared. And that's okay. Then there's a whole other school of people out there that have likely done some competition in CrossFit and they're on the fence about signing up for the open because they have this pressure of like, I know how fit I was. I know how fit everybody else is. And I'm not quite there right now. And I don't know if I should be signing up for this because I don't really feel like I'm where I should be right now. And that's what the purpose of today is all about. It's kind of giving us an understanding of like, what you guys should be doing if you should be signing up for the open and how to approach the open. And, and if you are looking to get a little bit further, so regardless of where you're at, okay, we're gonna start by talking about, should you sign up for the open? Here's the answer. Okay. If you are doing the workout, yes. Why not? Okay. Why not? You don't want to give CrossFit your $25. Okay. Totally fine. Don't give them your $25. But I do think that if you have the goal of going to be continuing on in CrossFit for years to come, that having your name in the CrossFit.com games website is a really cool thing. And also for you to see trends over every single year, whether it's you're moving up the leaderboard every single year, whether it's you're going into different age groups, whether you're just saying, man, I've got 11 stamps of open workouts that I have finished over the last 11 years, whatever that looks like to you. I think you should. I think why not? Okay. Now, when it comes down to getting the most out of the open season, here are going to be a few tips that I'm going to give you. And I'm going to start with the tips and then I'm going to talk to you guys about the experience. And then I'm going to talk to you guys that they're looking to go a little bit further than just the open. Okay. So first let's go over the tips. All right. So number one is go ahead and sign up. Okay. If you're nervous, that is normal. Okay. If you are feeling like you're not quite ready, that is also normal. Uh, if you feel like you could see yourself doing better next year. So you want to wait. That's also normal, but you're better off just signing up for it anyways, because you're going to be doing the workouts. All right. So here's what you, uh, some other tips I'm going to give you is number one. Okay. You've got to choose the right workout, the right stimulus. So if the workout starts off with three bar muscle ups and 10 power snatches at 55 pounds for females and 75 pounds for males, and you know that you cannot do a bar muscle up and you're going to sit there for seven minutes and stare at the bar and try and get a bar muscle up. I would probably scale the workout. And that's probably different than what a lot of CrossFit coaches are going to tell you. Now, am I not saying, am I saying that you should not spend that weekend working on bar muscle ups? Maybe you get your first bar muscle up and you can go ahead and put an RX stamp in the CrossFit leaderboard. That's totally fine. But your first attempt should be the workout that you can get the most 
fitness out of? Where can you be the most competitive? Getting one bar muscle up in a in a division where people are getting over 60 in that seven minutes is not going to really give you any like fitness gratification. Yeah, you got the one bar muscle up, but go ahead and work on bar muscle ups that weekend, but get the right workout stimulus in, in which case is testing your fitness. How much can you push through? It's not going to hurt you that bad to fight for one bar muscle up. Guess it's going to hurt a lot worse holding onto a barbell and going through jumping pull-ups or whatever the modification is for seven minutes or your heart rate's through the roof or you get, you know, the goal should always be, can I try and get as many reps as the fittest on earth? Okay. Now that's going to get you a lot better. Once again, I did not say do not work on bar muscle ups. I just said that you're going to get a lot more out of the workout if you choose the right division. Okay. So, and just because you scaled one workout doesn't mean you have to scale them all. Like you can always do RX, it doesn't really matter, okay? So choosing the right workouts. Number two is mechanics first. So going into the bar muscle up analogy, I've spoken openly on my social media about how in the earlier stages of my CrossFit career, people did not correct me on the poor movement patterns I had with specific movements. In which case, the first two to three years of CrossFit, I fucked up my shoulder, and there was nothing that I was going to be able to do that was going to repair that. And I kept using it over and over again. So you got to use mechanics first. Do not, do not sacrifice the next six months of your fitness for one score on the leaderboard. It is not worth it. Okay. Don't be afraid to go slower and move better, to go scaled and go farther those of you guys out there are more mature for doing that than letting your ego get in the way. And if you're scared to sign up for the open, my advice for you is to be scared and sign up for the scale division and fucking crush it because you're going to feel so much better that you did that. Okay. So I'm not saying that to push yourself. Don't be a sandbagger. You know who you are. Okay. Um, number three is you guys need to understand the importance of a proper, warm, proper warm up. And somewhat a proper cool down. I'm pretty lazy about my cool downs. I should get better about that. But the warm ups are so important. I cannot tell you, I can remember all the time, so many people in CrossFit classes don't want to touch the barbell. They don't want to feel the movement until the clock starts because they're worried about wasting their reps, wasting their energy. They get scared of how that movement's going to feel. You are doing yourself a disservice. If you don't get an understanding for how your body feels in those movements on that day, you are likely going in that workout with a long, wrong approach. As you become more seasoned in CrossFit, you will start to learn your body a little bit more. You're going to start to recognize, uh, I know I should not be touching going clean and jerks and toes to bar in a workout where I have 10 minutes to do that. I should probably be doing singles. You're going to learn that about yourself because you've done it over time. But in these times, you want to make sure that you're warmed up in your prime. You don't want to be waking up your central nervous system in the first minute of a seven minute AMRAP, you want to be well awake and otherwise you're going to miss your opportunity. So I'm not telling you guys to go in there and foam roll for 20 minutes and then hit your toe spacers and your this and that, but like just getting a general warm up in, getting, getting your body loose, hitting through the range of motion that you're going to be moving through. So if you're going to be doing thrusters, you're squatting, you're pressing overhead, if you're hanging on the pull-up bar, you're going to be hanging on the pull-up on your warm up. You're just getting those basic movement patterns built in for you. And I like progressive warmups where like you'll start off maybe doing, uh, let's just say the workout is thrusters and pull-ups, which is a common open workout for seven minutes. Okay. You know, you're going to be getting your heart rate up. You're going to be going below parallel. You're going to be using your hips. You're going to be doing pull-up stuff. You're going to be going overhead. So your warmup might be like some biking to get your heart rate up, some air squats, some scat pull-ups and some push-ups. Okay. I'm pushing, I'm going below parallel. I'm getting my heart rate up. I'm hanging from the pull-up bar. You might progress your next round into doing like empty bar front squats, empty bar presses, maybe some kip swings and some strict pull-ups. You're progressing as you go, building up into that. And then always start off your or the last part of your warm-up should always be going through a couple of reps of each movement, working on transitions um, and thinking about what you're going to be the best at or how you can strategize that workout the best. Okay, so you want to have a good warm-up. You want to have a good strategy with going into that warm up, which is the last piece of this is number four is, is strategy. You cannot rely on other people for your strategy. You might have similarities with other people, but you have to recognize that you're going
going to excel at different things. For instance, I am better at holding onto the barbell and moving a little slower than putting it down and moving faster. I am a slower twitch athlete by nature. So I'm going to cycle faster by not taking breaks. Whereas somebody else might do really good at doing sets of 10. Like if they have a hundred thrusters to do, they might do 10 sets of 10 and be really quick. I would rather grind through and never put the bar down. That's just who I am as an athlete. That strategy is not going to work for everybody. So you have to know who you are. You have to know your pace. You have to know what works best for you. Are you a step up on burpees kind of a person? Are you a jump up? Like where, where do you have to figure those things out? And that is something that only you can dictate. Okay. So the final piece of tips, and I know I said that four was just to have fun. Okay. You are doing this for a score. You are doing it to kind of push yourself, but have fun. It's going to hurt, but like, it's going to be fun. So the second piece of this today is talking about the experience. If you're new to this, I want you to really understand what you're about to experience. If you're seasoned and you're feeling this, I want you to know that it's totally normal to feel this way. Okay. You're going to have doubt. You're going to have nerves. You're going to have anxiety. Just, you're going to have those things, especially if you've never had a judge judging you. Now you've got somebody counting your reps. Okay. All that stuff is totally normal. It's okay. You're supposed to have those feelings. In fact, that pressure is going to actually push you to move a little bit faster and work a little bit harder. I promise you, you are going to do things you never thought you were capable of when other people are holding you accountable to it. Okay. You are going to feel all of those things. At the end of it all, you're going to be so proud of yourself. You're going to finish the work and be like, oh my God, I'm so happy that I did that. And then the next week comes around, it's going to be the same thing. Okay. We don't know what any of the workouts are. We won't know what any of the workouts are going to be until Thursday. But the experience is going to be a little bit nerve wrenching. It's going to be, it's going to make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but that's when the most growth happens. And I promise you, you will build so much confidence in yourself if you do this the right way, meaning you choose the right workout, you feel really good about that, and you don't let the worry about what other people are doing stop you from doing your best. Okay. You cannot control what everybody else in the class is doing, how fit everybody else is. All you can control is your own fitness. You can only do what you are capable of in that moment. And if you're giving 100% effort, that's all you need. Okay. So those are a little bit of your experience uh, there. Now I'm going to go into um, a little bit of like preparation for the open workouts. And then those of you guys that are looking to go on to the quarterfinals, semifinals, or age group online qualifiers. So what you guys are going to be doing if you're going into these open workouts is the volume of the workout is not going to be much different than your typical class workout. So what I want you to think about is how do you feel your best working out? What is, I want you to think about one of your last workouts where you're like, I crushed that workout. I felt so good. This is what I ate that day. This is how I slept that night. And I just felt like I was in such a good place. That's what you guys want to replicate for your open workout. That does not mean telling yourself you're showing up to Friday night lights at 6 PM after being at work didn't eat anything since 10 o'clock in the morning. Like, no, you have to prioritize a little bit. If you want to get the most out of it, I know you can't just quit your job and say I'm out for the day, but you can make sure that you leave your house with snacks in hand that you, you know, kind of schedule your workout in, the, in a day that's going to matter most to you. Maybe you are doing it on Saturday morning, talking to your affiliate owner and seeing what, the, uh, what, what is available to you in terms of getting the workout done. Maybe you're going in before work gets um, going that day to get your workout done. So you don't have to worry about stress. You don't have to worry about the stress of work or any of that stuff. So you're setting yourself up for the best possible experience. If you are just looking to do the open just for one and done and fun, I'm going to tell you guys, honestly, don't overemphasize things like nutrition and, and pre and post workout. The most important thing is to have nutrients on board, some carbs and some protein, something simple, yogurt and some berries, some granola, a granola bar, something like that, just something easy and to enjoy yourself, not to overthink it. Now, if you guys are planning on going on beyond the, uh, obviously the open and you're going, looking to get into semifinals, age group, online qualifiers, or, uh, quarterfinals, I should say quarterfinals or semifinals or age group online qualifiers, you guys should be looking ahead to nutrition strategies. And the open is a great way for you guys to start to experiment with like, what you should be eating before your workouts, because this is only going to be one workout going into quarterfinals. You guys are going to have multiple workouts in a day. So seeing how you feel best and how you recover from one high intensity workout is going to help you going into the next stages. Um, this is the time if you haven't already started to dial in your nutrition, that nutrition should be getting dialed in for sports and make sure that you guys are performing your best. If you are looking to go into quarterfinals, semifinals, age group, online qualifiers, you need to be at your best peak. So you want to be thinking about how your body is going to perform its best. 
ideal body composition, ideal fueling, ideal sleep recovery, all that stuff should be getting dialed in. Um, this means that for those of you guys that are looking to take it seriously, you should be looking at food quality, making sure that you're not getting a lot of inflammatory foods, that you're getting in enough um, antioxidant rich foods, and then quantity, making sure that you're getting enough calories, um, not too much. We don't want to put on excess body fat going into the season. Um, and that we're really controlling our intake to allow us to perform our best and being able to understand how we can tweak those things around competitions to be able to perform our best. And this is where experimentation is going to help you in the next stages. So the open, you know, I don't want you guys trying a bunch of new things this season, but it's a great opportunity for you guys to experiment with a couple of things here and get you guys ready for the next season or next stages of the season. So if you guys are um, looking for more nutrition help in terms of getting ready for your season, uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, age group online qualifiers, please reach out to me. I am 13 years into competing in sport and definitely have made my own fair share of mistakes and would love to be able to help anybody out there who is looking to optimize. Um, I wish I'd gotten into macro tracking earlier in my seasons of CrossFit, but I didn't. And so I would give that to anybody out there. If you're not already consistently keeping a food diary, even if you're not spot on macros, but at least watching your intake and seeing how you feel on that amount of intake of calories from carbs, fats, and proteins, it is a great time for you guys to start doing that. So I'm going to give you guys all one tip going into the open season, whether you are an open athlete, a quarterfinal, semifinal, or an age group online qualifier athlete, you should be tracking intake. This is a great time for you guys to experiment with that and get the most out of it. So Hopefully this episode was a little bit interesting. I know it's a lot about the CrossFit open season because I want you guys to understand the main thing about this is this, is that CrossFit open season is meant to be a fun experience for everybody. Yes, it is stressful, but it is also a great time for you guys to all be a part of the community, have fun, throw down with some friends, hit a good workout and move on. It should not be meant with, meant with so much anxiety and stress that it puts pressure on you and that you're feeling like you don't even want to show up to the gym. Okay. So I want you guys to enjoy the process. With that being said, those of you guys that do push yourselves really hard in the gym, let this workout be the one workout of the week that you go really hard at and let the other workouts take a back seat, back seat burner. So don't, don't burn yourself out earlier on in the week, save it for this workout, have fun with it and get fit. So Hope this episode was helpful for all of you guys out there. If you guys are doing the open and you guys are looking for some strategies, I'm probably going to be putting out some strategy videos as well uh, over the next couple of weeks. And then going into quarterfinals, semifinals to help those of you guys out there that are competing in the sport. Um, if that would be helpful for you, please let me know. And I will talk to y'all soon. Next episode. Talk to y'all later.